He's just a good old boy who loves burning rubber and driving fast. You're tuned into the Clay Milliken YouTube channel where you never know what you're gonna see. Hey folks, so I wanted to take Donna on a date. So where did we come to? The old LKQ pick your part. What are you hunting? Dakota part. <laughs> and when we were driving by, we saw this big old, I don't wanna call it a junkyard anymore, salvage yard. They got four Dakotas here. So we're going shopping. Women love shopping. That's why I'm calling it a date. What you find there, baby? Damn, the lids, John. Aww. Has it got a console? Boy, this poor little girl's been beat to death. It's one of the mother. Oh, it's because it's a four door. Doesn't really have a console. So. Whoo, it looks rough. Bro. 33, did we? I got a little jump seat. Do we want a little jump seat? I don't know. I don't know either. No console though. So it's a automatic. This is a console. All right, here's our next one. A Dakota Sport. No console. Dead gummit. It's got some fake hair in here though. I'm scared here's to touch it. All right, here's an, oh my goodness, baby, you ain't lying. Look at the rust bucket this thing is. Holy moly. Wow. Got a console. Don't know if it's the right one. We're gonna check it out. Ooh, that's a rust bucket. Look at that. Hope you enjoyed our date. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if it was successful or not, but we got part of a console. Working on the interior Baby D. No headliners. Console's kind of key, though. Anyway, let's go racing now. Maybe. Let's go see another junkyard. Shop day. So what y'all haven't seen that I've been doing, because it's boring and a lot of work. Got the motorhome cleaned up, washed up, unloaded. Donna actually unloaded everything. Because we've reached that point in the year... No more driving to the races. We will not be driving to Vegas or Pomona, which means Little Rat Dog and Iggy attended their last race of the year. What are we doing today? Got Baby D in the shop. I hope y'all know and love Baby D, our Gen 3 Hemi, six-speed Dakota. So... Baby D, so we had put new carpet in, and I bought a cheesy little, you know, console thingy just to keep my water bottles in, and uh, look like a Twinkie wrapper in there. It's not the most comfortable. So you saw us, or you should have saw in this video, me and Donna out at a junkyard when we were racing in St. Louis. Got some parts and pieces. I know y'all already saw that sitting on the floor. So we got some parts and pieces out of an old Dakota. Some of this stuff, just different parts and pieces we gathered up. And we found a console for an automatic Dakota. And a couple parts out of Durango. Anyway, yesterday, while I was washing the motorhome, I washed this up. So this is the part that I needed that we got from the junkyard near St. Louis. Uh, this was broken off. That come out of something else. I repaired it, kinda. I just put a lot of screws into the plastic. It works. The downside is it needs a new one because it sticks up over here, which really, really bugs me. Because this is kind of like foam and glue and it used to stay down like that and it don't anymore it's old so I took I had this piece from baby D when it was purchased but all this was broken and nasty so when we found this I took the center part out bolted it screwed it into that and what we're about to find out is will the thing fit right back in there and we all need an armrest. So that's kind of what we're doing. Along with, 
I got a box in from Summit. It's been, been here for probably a month. But since I'm going to have... How am I going to do this? I'm going to take the seats out, take the carpet out. And I got this box of hush mat from Summit Racing. Try to put a little insulation in Baby D's. Because sooner or later, planning on having some AC in there. So we want it to be cool. Oh, how about this shirt I got on today, y'all? So my sister Tracy got me this. Uh, this is the coordinates. Is that the word? Coordinates? 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 Whatever it is. Drummond's, Tennessee. Drummond's 10. Two stores and a cotton gin. So let's go to work on our junkyard find of uh, console parts. See if we can make this work. Get ourselves an armrest and a console in Baby D instead of the El Cheapo. And see if I can make my carpet a little nicer because I did not do a good job installing the carpet. That was one of those things where I needed Donna to give me a hand, but I didn't. Dang it, Donna. I got carried away. I'm putting snacks. We uh, put the carpet back in. I didn't show the hush mat. <laughs> I was excited because we got it in there. And uh, so, as you can see, I did the uh, back of the cab. It's in the floor all the way. I left this where the seats bolt. There is like an air gap right there, so I left that. But stuff really is actually pretty good. The other thing, typical guy thing, so I opened up one box. I went straight to work. Well, it came with two boxes, and I just laid the stuff in there, like putting giant vinyl wrap on. It came with instructions. And it came with pieces that go in a particular spot. Anyway, I just cut and rolled. And what did we get for roller? What a is that? A, a paint roller. A paint roller. A four inch thin paint roller. Mike Cotton will give me crap over that. But well, uh, it worked. Cotton's not here. Cotton's so. not here yeah. working. But yeah, it come out really good. Hopefully, makes Baby D a little more insulated for when we do get AC. So now I'm uh, battling trying to get the holes cut in the carpet for our console, which I really like. And Donna found an armrest. It was a uh, eBay item for like what? <laughs> it was $89. $89. $89 for that silly little armrest. But she or me didn't want to deal with this uh, gap and a lot of comments on baby d about that's the headliner our, that's our next thing that's the next thing so headliners coming up and i think it's tan donna we said gray i think no, that's it's, tan it's gray i don't know it's gray it does look bad and the uh visors look bad oh yeah that visor over there is non-existent but uh we're getting there getting there baby d's getting nicer and nicer uh excited for the console i'll show you when it's done but i did get ahead of myself because i was just laying that hush mat down i'll show you when we're done all right i got a mess and if y'all watched this at all you know i hate a mess in the shop oh check this out i got two of these really cool fan gave these to me dentally baby d Stomp on that loud pedal, made out of nice heavy metal. A paper towel holder. Got two of them. Got this cool little deal. Actually, pretty neat little caricature. That's pretty cool. Got my moon pie signs. Tyler Jesse. All right. Check that out. That looks so good. So much better than my little cheesy uh, console that I had in there. I like it. It looks good. Makes it more sleek. Like I say, got one of these new coming. Next on the agenda is the old headliner. 
So, not the most exciting video. I say that a lot when we're not like stomping on the loud pedal of the race car, but here's a look from the driver's side. I like it. It looks good. Pretty awesome how it all come out. This is all stock Dakota stuff, including the boot. It just fits the console. The only thing I had to do that had to put a screw there because I ended up having to trim back here because the shifter does come out a little closer to the rear of this, but it all works good. Of course, there's the old line lock button. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, got the console done. Getting fairly late. I don't even know what time it is. 11, oh, it's 12 o'clock, y'all. 12 o'clock at night. Anyway, grabbed the phone, thought I'd answer a couple questions. Always enjoy doing that, and I think y'all seem to enjoy it as well. On the video, huge explosion, cost us big. What breed were the pups at the end? So, our dogs, Iggy is the white dog with the, uh, the shiner. Looks like the target dog if you're a younger person. He is uh, in a person my age, Donna's age, maybe your age. Spuds McKenzie, one of the most popular animals ever on television when he was out there representing a uh, adult beverage, Bud Light. Spuds McKenzie, and the little one is Millie. They are miniature bull terriers. Awesome, awesome dogs. Absolute wide open or dead asleep. There's like no in between with those dogs. So anyway, games and tanks, miniature bull terriers. Spudge McKenzie was full size, by the way. And a lot of y'all, if you watch the movie Friday, all the Friday movies, Ice Cube, which are great, funny movies, by the way, Chico. If you know that, if you watch the movie, you'll know Chico. Michael Hamilton, also on Huge Explosion. Clay, what's with the sound? I'm not sure what you're talking about, Michael, or I would give you an answer. Uh, nobody else has complained about the sound, and you got to remember, it's no big production crew doing this. It's me, it's Double Duty Austin, sometimes Donna a little bit. A lot of it is done, the majority of it is done on my cell phone. And couple of GoPros every now and then. The stuff with me and Jimbo in the lounge, that is GoPro. John Mattingly, were you able to tell what caused the explosion? Well, typically when you have a big explosion like that, like if you go back and look at our one in Topeka, I read some of the comments on that, hilarious by the way, that you know, people will say, oh, I seen it go lean, I could see this, I could hear that on the video, no. At Topeka, if you go back and look at that explosion, 100% rocker arm failure. Broke a rocker arm, pushed the retainer right off of the valve, the, key, the locks fall out, valve is now loose, kaboom. If you have an intake valve hang open on one of these things and the fire gets back up into the manifold, it is not a good day. What happened at, uh, where were we at, Dallas? The last one, ears still ringing from that one. That was a big one. One of the biggest ones I've had in a really, really long time. What caused that? It appears as though, for whatever reason, and they were not left loose. Zane, the young man that does her bottom end, does an amazing job. Well, we had a brand spanking new block in the thing. I think it had seven runs on it. Something's going on with the main nuts coming loose. Not like falling off loose, but backing off. We are trying to determine that now. It appears that the, the washers have some super slick coating. You torque them, then under all that crazy vibration, they're starting to loosen up. Once they loosen up, crankshaft has got so much pressure pushing down on it. We lost about 50 pounds of oil pressure. Now we run a lot of oil pressure, near 200 pounds. So it went from around that 200 mark down to 150 mark we see an event happening, meaning suddenly the boost goes up through the roof, which means a piston quit working, a cylinder quit working. Shortly thereafter, kaboom. So we're pretty sure that we had the crank 
pushed down enough, like say mains were somewhat loose. And I promise you guys, it was not Zane because that's not the first time it's happened and it's happening throughout the pit area. So that's kind of what that is. It looks like we lost oil pressure, smoked the rod bearing out of it, chunked the rod, the piston hit the intake valve and come boom. This is a question from a really old video called Pull the Chutes. I think I explained how the parachutes work in the car. Can you tell us if you get nervous what it feels like on your body? Yes, I get nervous. I'm gonna tell you that the nerves, the butterflies, I like to say, the, that, that nervousness, that fun feeling of knowing you're fixing to do something crazy and exciting. I have that really, like at a high level, for the first qualifying run. Kind of goes away a little bit, still there, but it goes away a little bit for the rest of qualifying. Then here the butterflies come roaming back in there for first round. And then as you start going rounds, you just kind of get into a rhythm and it gets easier and easier and easier. And to be honest with you, by the time you get to final round, most of the time it's like, let's go, let's do this. And boom, you're off and running. It's, it's awesome. Donald Moser, I'm gonna tell y'all, I have not read these ahead of time. So Donald Moser, maybe this is a dumb question, but why don't, why do you waste time working on the engine that blew up? Wouldn't it be faster, more productive to just drop a complete engine into the car? Well, Mr. Donald Moser, you are correct. If we had turned on the wind light, we would literally have pulled that engine out, put another one in. But because we lost, the importance at that moment becomes, why did it do that? Can we prevent that from happening again? And it was way more important for that to happen and to take that process a little slower than just yank the motor out, throw it to the side, put another motor in, get the car ready to go. Well, we had two weeks to get the car ready to go. So we need to find out why it did it. And that was why we didn't just shake it out and throw another one in. I'm gonna continue scrolling here. Here is one from our qualifying video, 15,000 on the line, one run. This is Wyeth Trumpet. Clay, I noticed some top fuel and funny card dragsters have only one drag chute. I thought two chutes were required. Why is this? Wyeth, I'm not sure what you saw, but all the nitro cars have two parachutes, mandatory. If you don't have them on there, they will not let you run. So I'm not sure what, what you saw there. Wheel shell, is there anything special about the gloves they use to clean the tires? Nope, and I've covered this once before. I think cleaning tires is purely monkey see, monkey do, not necessary, but we do it anyway. All right, here's, here's an interesting one. I'm gonna read this whole thing. It's kind of funny. Ah, it's not really funny, but anyway, Ryan, the ride mechanic ask. So what do you do after an early out? Just pack it in and head out? Do you stick around and see who wins it? Like Dale Earnhardt would be at the airport before the engine cooled. Well, it's according to what needs done. For This is for me. Uh, the rest of the team has a standard routine. They check the chassis. They, they, they work on everything that needs to be done for their department, whether it be cylinder heads, clutch, on and on and on. Uh, they have X amount of stuff they want to do before they call it a day and get packed up. Typically, they don't leave until Monday afternoon. Me, it's according to what I need to get done. Uh, a lot of times there's stuff on the race car that I want to do myself. A lot of times it involves putting decals on or whatever the case may be. Maybe it's something that I want to move around, you know, something with the parachutes, you name it. It may be some little project that I want to do, and that determines what time I leave. Definitely not like Dale Earnhardt that had a helicopter waiting on him, I promise you that. Y'all see that motorhome back there? That's usually what's waiting on me. Last thing I want to cover. I am not the only one this is happening to, but I am so sick. I don't know if they're spammers, they're bots, whatever they are. But folks, if you get something, I see one right here is what made me say that. I'm just going to 
tell y'all what it says. Text me on Telegram. Expect more videos soon. Send me a text above. I have something for you. That is not me. That is not any YouTuber that says, text me on Telegram. No. Don't pay attention to it. Please don't give them any information. It's not us. It's not me. I don't know why this is happening. It's just a scam and it's very frustrating because I've been trying to do these giveaways for every time we pass a thousand and it makes it difficult for me to contact whoever wins and them to actually believe that it's me. So anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. And I love the questions. I don't do this as often as I should, but I'll do it as much as I can. End of the season's coming up. We'll have more time to do stuff like this. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you in the next one.